beginning of medicine, scientists and doctors had been playing detective with new diseases. They had to find the who, who's getting sick, the what, what's making them sick, the how, how is it spreading, and the where, where did it originate. If you think about it, this is dangerous work. Along comes a new disease that no one knows anything about. No one knows what it does, how it spreads, or where it came from. Fortunately, over the years, scientists have developed methods and tactics to get to the bottom of any new disease outbreak. This won't mean an immediate cure for the disease, but it will help identify it and track it. Even though there are several more, I'll just be focusing on two, genetic analysis and disease modeling. Let's start with genetic analysis. Viruses contain deoxyribonucleic acid, also known as DNA, and ribonucleic acid, also known as RNA, giving them the power to evolve. As the viruses and bacteria grow, the molecular material, which is the basic material inside cells, changes. Though they don't live for very long, viruses and bacteria are able to recreate themselves in huge quantities. This evolutionary change, which can be very fast, is called the molecular clock. When a virus travels to a new victim, it starts a new branch of that virus's genetic tree. Then, the clock will tick until the victim is killed by the infection or until the victim's body manages to defeat it. As a part of genetic analysis, scientists observe the genetic sequence in, of, of the virus in a victim's body and compare it to the sequence of the same virus in other people who might also be experiencing um, sickness. Researchers can also assume that um, viruses with similar sequences come from the same place around the same time, giving clues as to how a disease traveled from person to person. An example of a disease that genetic analysis has been used on is AIDS or HIV. There's still no cure, but with this method, a, medica a medication was created to help control the symptoms. More recently, during the COVID-19 pandemic, scientists using genetic analysis have shared their sequencing of thousands of coronavirus genomes. This is worldwide data that helps scientists trace the origin of new outbreaks, identify where and when the disease was transmitted, and identify mutations. For example, there's growing evidence that of over 13,000 mutations, one of them in particular, 614G, has made the virus more infectious. Genetic sequencing has also enabled rapid vaccine development by helping researchers figure out which part of the virus is best to target. So now you know about genetic analysis and its relation to COVID-19. The second method is disease modeling. A disease model is something that helps track and figure out how a disease will spread. They're made up of all the facts and data that scientists have accumulated about the disease. Even if there's very little information to start with, scientists can look at similar diseases and think, what if this one will spread similarly to that one? However, if the data put into the model isn't of good quality, then the quality of the information obtained from the same model won't be good either. So a disease model can help analyze a disease outbreak and help figure out the pattern of a spread in a population. Modeling can also be used to clarify complex biological systems. For example, scientists have used disease models to help develop new and more precise treatments for many types of cancer. Of course, this method is also being used now during the coronavirus pandemic. Disease modeling is being used by local and federal governments to help organize their resources. The data informs decisions about social distancing measures and other needs, such as the number of hospital beds. So it's greatly helping the situation. Now you know a little bit more about tracking diseases. I hope this was helpful and that you enjoyed the talk. Thank you so much for listening.